President Biden has a plan to tackle pumped up gas prices. Right now, the national average, oh yes. New facts show COVID cases are on the rise again. Here's the latest from Ohio's health department. Of course, we're thinking either it was a really long night for a lot of the NBA revelers or a real early morning for those who are just about to get out of town. So yeah, you might see a little more traffic out there in the early morning. And right now, leaders in Ukraine, they are telling citizens in the eastern part of the country to flee their homes. Breaking news right now downtown. Town protesters, they've gathered at the Justice Center and they're working their way through downtown. Apparently, they're getting a little louder, too. Yeah, Jen Pachando has been out there. Okay, Jen, thank you. Looks like everybody's at least keeping their cool and fingers crossed that it stays yeah. that way. Oh, my goodness. I mean, it, it looks phenomenal. It does. What a great idea, but you need a stomach for that, I would imagine. You're going to be a little off balance yeah. when you get yeah, off that coaster. Wild, All right, coming up at 6. You probably know this, right? Most parents can probably find plenty of clothes and toys in their homes that have the kids have absolutely outgrown. We're talking just stuff that takes up space and collects lots of dust. I can find the toys. They're here, yeah. here, here, <laughs> on my way here. Again, we are talking a blast that neighbors say really rocked this entire Geauga County neighborhood. You can see right behind me what is left of the house. Part of it really knocked off its foundation. And again, yeah, the three people inside were told, neighbors say, a mother and her two teenagers, they made it out with minor injuries and dad was in the garage and apparently he wasn't hurt at all. So the big question right now, of course, is what the heck happened here? Joining us. A developing story following a traffic tragedy in Geauga County. Five people killed in a head-on collision in Newberry Township. They were in a van that was transporting a group of people with developmental disabilities from Cuyahoga County. The van and semi-truck colliding on Ravenna Road. The van was headed to a job site in Geauga County. We have a semi-truck and a van and a telephone pole all involved in a crash. There were seven people in that van. The driver and four of the passengers were killed. The two others are in the hospital with serious injuries. We're told the truck driver was also injured. It's not clear right now which driver is at fault. Police not releasing the names of any of the victims so far either. And happening today, a local woman who police say was tortured, then murdered, will be laid to rest. Alicia Pointer, just 22 years old, her funeral is in about an hour at Pentecostal Church of Christ in Cleveland. Police found her body two weeks ago in the basement of a vacant East Cleveland home. Detectives say her murder was a retaliation crime. Four of the seven suspects in court yesterday, a judge setting their bond at $2 million each on charges of aggravated murder and kidnapping. An elderly man falls down a ravine, launching a huge rescue operation, the man now recovering. Vic Gideon reports from Richmond Heights on what it took to save him. Cleveland City Council is giving property tax relief to developers of three major projects in the city. They include a 91-unit apartment complex at East 30th and Euclid, which will also offer retail and commercial space on that first floor. There's also a hotel project. We're talking full renovation of the Renaissance Hotel on Public Square to be renamed the Hotel Cleveland. And finally, at East 105th and Cedar, a mixed-use building project with residential space and a Meyer grocery store. That'll be Meyer's first urban store in Ohio. Now, each is a multi-million dollar project. Together, they're expected to create a few hundred full-time jobs in the city. The Ohio Department of Health just wrapping up a press briefing with a familiar message. The unvaccinated continue to drive the increase in cases and hospitalizations. Unvaccinated Ohioans from COVID-19. And of course, we're just days away from Thanksgiving and COVID is a worry for many families. Doctors are urging everyone to get tested before and after the get togethers. And if you're feeling sick, ah, just pass and stay home. The Northern Ohio Recovery Association is hosting a gratitude turkey giveaway right now. It's on East 55th Street. There are no income requirements, but you have to register on site to pick up your bird. And we're all about the bird right now and travel to get to that bird. Yeah, good news. It's becoming a familiar story. So tired of mandatory overtime. A oh. worker announces he's had enough. And a suspect leads police on a foot chase only to be stopped by construction crews. Oh, mm. quite a story here. A tense police chase unfolds outside of Toledo High School. Then it continues right inside the school. Yeah, a man refused to follow officers' commands. Stop. And that's when the chase wound up 
in that school building. And once in the school, the suspect was tackled by oh. a team of contractors working in the hallway. Thank goodness for them. Officers then took the man into custody. All students and staff, they're all safe. Okay, glad they caught him. Hey, check this out. All right, so it's Bear Eats KFC from <laughs> Fridge. All right, that's, that's basically what happened here. California, this happened in California. Surprise, found the front door open. Three bears in his home. Mama Bear was outside watching the house, but her two cubs were inside ransacking the kitchen, <laughs> eating the leftover KFC. He managed to get the bears out of his home. But his parakeet Ditka, get it, Ditka, bears, the bears, Ditka, is missing. Ugh. You have to include that. But Woody the dog escaped and was picked up by a, a neighbor. Uh, so we know what happened to the dog, but the, the parakeet, I Ditka might, have, might have flown flew away. away. Ditka That's flew what away. Yes. Look it's at not that bear. Part of the KFC. Is that crispy? <laughs> Extra crispy. Yeah, that happens yes. in California. And then this an Arizona police officer, tired of being asked to work overtime, announces his resignation over his two way radio. Officer Mark, Mark Ryan's shift was just about over when the dispatcher informed him that he was expected to work late that day. And mm. that was it for Ryan. He radio, radioed back that he's quitting. And then he made it official by taking his resignation letter into the office. The letter said he would no longer work in an environment where he does other shifts work on top of his own. The letter is calling attention to the department's lack of staff and uh, the toll it's taking on officers again. Yeah, a very common story we're hearing these days. Okay. So, well. Tell us which one you think is the fail of the day. Log on to Cleveland19.com, vote to weigh in, and we'll have the results coming up later in the newscast. We'll be right back. I know what I'm voting. Her remorse seems genuine. I'm embarrassed as heck. I'm ashamed. Her excuse, heartbreaking, as she looks at a picture of her recently deceased husband. I miss him. I want to be with him, and that was the whole point. 56-year-old Debbie Hyde, mother of three, grandmother of five, says she turned to heroin for the first time, trying to kill herself. That's bad enough, but that she admits to doing it before climbing behind the wheel of her pickup truck with her 11-month-old grandson in tow makes it a whole different story. Claims she had no idea the drug would hit her so fast. Now, Debbie says the last thing she remembers is pulling into this gas station just around the corner from her house to get her grandson something to drink. The next thing that happens, though, Police find her parked near these propane tanks in her truck with her foot on the brake, pretty much passed out, and her grandson in the back seat. Do have his... The baby's father, her youngest yeah. son, is shocked too and is not leaving her side. When I got the phone call about my child, I thought she, something with her diabetes, that's what I thought. You know, never thought in a million years that it had been that. It was up against these, uh, these tanks, and uh, it certainly could have been uh, disastrous. Elyria Police Captain Chris Constantino stresses while she is in trouble, it's what she could have done to everyone else around her that bothers her most. I hope she gets some help, I really do. And she promises she will do just that. I've always protected my kids, my grandkids. That was the dumbest thing I could have ever done, and I'm so, so, so sorry. I beat myself up. In Elyria, Catherine Bosley, Cleveland 19. We all have different ideas of where health and well-being should be on life's priority list. And like our Jeff Tanchak, different ideas. Middle-aged, averagely fit person. On just how healthy we are. But now an idea to get you closer to the truth. I mean, I think it's a good idea to have some way you can check at home to get a general idea of your health. Dr. Mark Meekham with the Cleveland Clinic giving a thumbs up to a five-step test people are talking about. And Jeff is willing to go at it with me, starting with a tough one. So basically you're getting on your elbows, up on your toes. The plank. You're able to use your muscles of your abdomen and your low back and can tell how strong your core is. Also good for balance. And this test calls for holding. Starting now. Starting now. Yes, for two minutes. Two minutes. For two minutes. A pretty strong start. You're getting a good shot of my. Good. You're getting a good shot of my muscles. <laughs> getting past the first minute, though. Oh, the burn begins. Go. We're doing good. You're doing good. Starting to break a little sweat. But finally, we make it. Thanks. Right. Next, what proves to be even tougher for both of us: stand, sit, stand. The catch here: no hands and no knees, which would look like how Dr. Meekham's assistant Stacy shows us. Okay, no hands. Uh, All right. How hard is that? Not that hard. Nice. Well, we both get the sitting down part nailed. The rest, oh, not so pretty. I can somehow do it like this. 
And as for Jeff, well, he sure deserves an A for effort. No. Can't do it. Can't do it. It's time to drop some weight and get to the gym. Third test, though, is where Jeff redeems himself. I feel it. Okay, and count. Okay. The resting heart rate comes in at 76. Awesome. Hey, he's good to go. Falls right in the preferable range of 60 to 80. Much more above that, it suggested it's worth a doctor's visit. Heart rate is too fast. It means your heart is working harder than it should be. Next up. Now I gotta tell you, I've had no complaints about my breath. Oh yeah, it's the breath test. And it's really about detecting diabetes. Run it down your tongue. Uh, Scrape it. Like that? Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll let that sit for a little bit. So you're looking for a sweet smell. You're looking for a sweet smell as a sign that your body's giving off glucose or sugar. And believe it or not. You don't want to smell this? No, that's yours. It smells like the bag. Nothing sweet here. Finally, the clock drawing test. Big okay. circle, you need a big circle. Right. It is more complicated than you think, and it often demonstrates something that you didn't realize was going on. He explains it's really about picking up on possible dementia. No worries about dementia. Not yet. Some other worries, but not dementia yet. Whew, that was fun. Thanks. Let's go work out.